Let's start immediately, shall we? Finally, I had got hands on some stack ranked rounds. And what I would like to first say is, you're not taking roles seriously. This is mostly due to a factor that you have been told how you should not main just one or two operators, but all of them, and that is incorrect. You cannot main every operator. However, you shall main one role, not one operator, but not either all the operators. You need to master just one role to success. This is very important in stacks that I watched. I have seen loads of dronings and so what fine coordination, but what made the round to be lost is the lack of the roles. No one knows what is he supposed to do. To master a role, you need to know what to expect from every other operator. But that doesn't mean you had to main every operator. You can know how to play with Clash even if you have never bought her, similar to the Capito. So first and foremost, main a role, but not every operator. Let's talk about overall blunders. Oh, and if you want to see all 35 things that possibly could keep you from gold to higher ranks, with multiple examples for each mistakes, head on to the description. 1. Solo queue playstyle. When you're playing as a solo queue, you want to use your gadgets and especially on defense, to your advantage. Volker is a great solo queue operator because you can cover your own flank with the cameras. You can even start to flank with the help of the Volker cameras, like if you have one on the top of the red stairs on the villa. In the background clip, that's actually a free stack match, but it has played just as solo queue. But the point of this is, Volker has put zero cameras for herself and for the roaming setup. That means, she will always have to face check attackers that will be pushing her. Alib is also a great solo queue operator because she's a free speed, has a pocket shotgun and impacts. And you always want to pick these if you're going to solo queue roam. That's a life savior. Also in the clip in the background, we'll see Mozi using pests as an objective mute. Mozi shines in the solo queue, but as well as in the stack because you can usually grab one drone for yourself to pretend as a Valkyrie with a selfish camera and with the other two pets you can block off a big area and roam pretty freely. This was a solo queue clip when Mozi still had a shotty. Would you like a solo queue video? Let's hit this video up with 2000 likes and I will make it happen. Also, also. This is a similar but a bit different topic. Utility usage in objective, versus of the objective. In the clip in the background, we will see jammers being put only in the throne, with some questionable jammers as well. This objective is heavily held with the roamers on the top, and if you lose the top floor control, it is over. The bonus part is, you didn't jam the drone hole at all. So how to decide if you want to use your stuff outside versus inside of the objective? if your anchors will suffer from the vertical angles or if attackers will be able to open additional paths such as opening up the yellow walls in the theme park, you should rather use your Volky cameras, Mozi pests, or Mew jammers, deployable shields, or even sometimes evil eyes outside of the objective. The most default outside evil eye objective is probably Odenite on Villa. Having guys on the 90 and his hallway will allow you and your anchor players to play on different positions. It will also allow to possibly start flank and what not. If you had one evil eye in the aviator and the other one in the games, you are doing nothing smart with the evil eyes. It is similarly as bunkering yourself all in the two objectives and that's it. In gold matches, I have always seen at least one or two roamers which is very good, whereas on the previous episodes there were times that all people were anchoring. However, you need to think about this even with your utility. If you are going to roam with two or three players, consider to reinforce offside locations, such as triple statue revolves on the villa when defending aviator and games, whilst having a bulletproof camera by the astronomy facing toilet. With just these four utility, your two roamers around statuary and trophy will be able to solo attackers for at least a minute or two, instead of being pushed immediately when drowned out. 
I'm pretty sure I will be able to talk about this more into the Platinum matches, where using the totality outside of the objective is a must and not just a recommended thing to do. 43, which is also pretty related to this. Think about usefulness of your utility and if you're wasting it. In the in-game clips, you will see multiple rounds how the barbed wire placements or shields should not be there, that if I were in your team, I would happily destroy it. If you are going to place a barbed wire in a default place to be as a defender, any movement that he makes could make him killed. If I have to deny an attacker getting on the top of the white stairs and a barbed wire is just on my spot, if I move, I will be pre-fired. Speaking of the barbed wires, understand how and when to place them. Stacking them doesn't work. Putting one next to another one is not recommended because just one Zofia or S charge will destroy it. Putting barbed wires just on the top of the stairs is bad because a attacker will most likely be able to bypass it or will already have an angle on you. There are exceptions. Put barbed wires usually in the mid of the stairs. There are at least 20 or more examples in the document link of bad usage of utility as well as the waste of utility. One big topic is also game decision based on the current situation. This is an ongoing issue for the older ranks, it just differs on which scale. If there is a 30 seconds left and the diffuser is on the other side of the map, and if it is a 2 versus 2, clip in the background. Maybe it is a better idea to go for the frags, especially if there were no red rotation to the CC, or if you are in a clutch situation, like in the clip in the background. You don't want to hide unless it's 5 seconds ticking and you know that they don't have diffuser. You want to force one versus ones and not hide in a corner where attackers will have more than enough time to join you out. Play close to the wall with the shotgun. They will breach up the wall on your back. Push the bridge with the shotgun. Any one versus one is easier than any two versus one. Similarly to the one versus two. In this clip where you will be in a one versus four, you need to peek Ash and not Ash you. Force the one versus ones. Also, before I go to the next topic, pick gunfights carefully depending on if you're Ash or Thermite. Clip it the background. If you are the only hard breacher and you didn't open the wall, maybe you shouldn't risk a fight, especially if you don't know where the defender is. There are many, many misplays that can be found in the documents file in the description. Here are some random advices that I had seen across at least 35 or more rounds that I have received. If you are in a 5 stack and you are roaming, you are the least one that should be on the cameras, especially if you start being on the camera on the wide open, as we have seen in the clip. For the further examples, I will just show you these in game. Obviously, you can find examples in the documents. When you are breaking a window to peek, break it by the side so the glass doesn't shatter. If the glass is there, a taker will have a harder time spotting the barricade hole. Sound doesn't go through the glass, so sometimes destroying the glass is the way. You can do it by shooting the barricade up to 5 times on 5 different locations. You don't want to open the barricade. If you are sneaking out, shoot only if must. Avoid destroying claymores or goo mines. Vault over if possible. Should the cameras could be a good thing because there is a bug that they can be on the camera but it isn't shown on your PC. Ok, now let's talk about the defender blunders. Common thing across most ranks is not understanding how to play an objective. Clip it the background. This issue is very relevant because when people are watching other YouTube videos or if they are being taught by someone how to do something, they are probably not being told the reason why should they do that. It's practically impossible to remember all the basic strats on all 48 objectives across 12 maps. Another reason you should know why is because the strat is not just how to play your utility in a correct way. The strat is all about how to play around the utility. For that, you need to have teammates of your to understand how to play the map as well as you, because communication is the key for any strat. Utility is just maybe one third of the strat. Similarly, but a bit different is that you need to be more unique with the gadgets. 
Like, we will be able to see the background clip. If I was an attacker and some of my teammates joined out Valkyrie, the first thing what I'm going to do is check for the default places for Valkyrie. If I don't know that if there is a Valkyrie, again, the first thing that I will do is the same. Checking for the default Valkyrie outside placements. Whether it be on the device surface where the person has thrown the camera in the background clips or somewhere by the east balcony walls. Be more creative. There's a whole picture guide on the Valkyrie setups on all rank maps and objectives in the link in the description. I have touched a bit of the destroying teammates gadgets if necessary, so just check the clip in the background. And during that, you need to understand how to play 2 vs 2s, 3 vs 1s correctly. In these situations, you need to play somewhat safe. There is no need to hold extended angles, as you will be able to see in the clip in the background. If the player was killed, and there is a huge chance that he ruled because he was in the wide open, attackers will get yellow status control immediately. And a 2 versus 1 versus someone that is someone still roaming, which is not ideal for him. The best way to play this out is to still play around yellow and let your teammate know to play more passive. There is nothing much to say about this clip. Especially, don't check new angles in 3 vs 1. Play a 3 vs 1. Don't play 3 times 1 vs 1s. That's how you lose a 3 vs 1. The same reason I recommended you to force any 1 vs 1 if you're in a class situation. If you are not 3 vs 1, you don't want to game them 1 vs 1s. Never. I will talk about two more stuff in Defenders, and the first one will be positioning yourself into a corner of the room. I had seen plenty of these, and it's probably another issue of watching too much YouTube Montaigne's. Being in the corner not to be expected when works, it really works, therefore it is a good video material, but in the most situations it is not advisable to do. The game sense needs to be top tier to position yourself in the similar locations, like on the villa's closet for instance. If you are spotted, you cannot retreat back, therefore you are useless there. Also when defending against a repel place, you want to be usually as close to the wall as possible, and not as far, as you can see in the background clip. The last thing in Defender Blunders what I would like to talk is, again, pre-planning the round also in a 5 stack. We have seen already this clip, but I wanted to point this out. Valkyrie started off from the cocktail. She goes to the new hatch, then to piano to reinforce the freezer walls, then she goes to the top white stairs, and back to the new hatch to place an inside camera. You have lost whole preparation phase and 20 seconds for this setup, which is not good. I'll talk about this more in the platinum or diamond matches. But when you're done with your setup as quick as possible, hunt for the drones. Hunt for the drones doesn't mean run mindlessly for them. It means to check default drones to be pre-placed. If you don't see any drone, let's say in the CCTV on the border, that's huge intel for you. That most likely means that attackers won't be contesting CCTV earlier in the round. The reason why I don't want to talk too much in depth to this in this video is because people in the gold or lower still don't understand how to pre-place their drone correctly during the preparation phase. So you really cannot take this into the consideration that much. What you can do is to try find drones where they will usually be. Many times I have seen people leaving drones at the corner of an outside barricade, just like on the east stairs. When preparation phase is done, destroy both barricades and check for the corners and destroy the drones. Let's see the attacker blunders, and the majority of it is droning. What I have seen in different than lower ranks is that you are finally aware of the second drone, and most of the time you guys are using it. However, when you use it, you forgot about it later in the round, as you will be able to see in the cafe's clip, as there was a drone in the servers already. People in the gold rather prefer face checking than droning ahead. However, when people do drone, and when they threw it, they threw it directly to the defender's line of sight, or are simply over droning, droning too much like on the cafe's example. You're asking your drone to be destroyed, 
and you won't gain anything from it. You'll be killed because of that, because you don't have any more a drone. So far, this was mentioned in the previous videos. However, what I didn't mention before is holding angles with the drones. If you get an area covered, as you will be able to see in one of the villas example, if you are taking statuary and trophy and you drone out statuary, you don't need to drone out short or long on the second floor 90. You can hold an angle with the drone from the statuary towards the short. And you're doing the same thing as droning short. The info who or what is in the short or even further is irrelevant for your statuary and astronomy push. Don't lose your intel. The intel you have whose statuary is clear is gold. Pure gold. If you lose that drone, you have zero clue about statuary then. The same map but other player. Background clip. What will you do with the aviator being clear knowledge? If you cannot act on the intel you are getting with the drone, you don't need to get that information. All what you are doing here is destroying your own eyes. For the preparation phase drones, I don't think I have seen more than 5 times a drone being pre-played on a position that a player can use it during the action phase. As in the clip in the background, it is okay to put the drone in your spawn. But if you are planning to push Watchtower T1, T2 or T3, put a drone in between T2 and T3. This clip was also in a 5 stack, so you can ask your teammate of yours to check the drone whilst you are getting ready to repel in. This is Insta map control, unlike wasting 10 to 15 seconds just to clear out the tower, or losing a drone if someone was in the tower. Another huge issue with the preparation drones is for the odd reason people just want to scam people in by the cost of their drone. Why do you need to pick 17 times the same guy in the background clip? Also, with the following example on Oregon, you'll see them attacking kids in the main hall. However, for some reason, the drone are pretty much drawn the whole map. The moment you enter the meeting, the kitchen info is useless. I'm again talking about too much droning or over droning. This will cost your 1 minute and 20 seconds to drone nothing but someone by the tower stairs from where you started the drone. Drone important areas, areas that your team or yourself will push. If you have no intentions of pushing basement in the top floor push, then check for the stairs in the Harry Potter. And if it is clear, go to T2 whilst having a flank drone watching your flank or an air jab, since you were nomad. Speaking about that, use air jabs to deny flank that might happen. Not that may not happen, like on the cafe's example. Also, if you picked nomad or gridlock in the background's clip, then use their gadgets. Just because you haven't put the tracks on the dragon stairs will get a teammate of your killed. Thinking about all this, I'm still wondering if people in the gold and lower understand the power of the drones and the flank drones. Flank drones will be more important topic in the platinum or diamond games. So I will be talk more about this in the next videos. Let's stop talking about the droning. Let's not talk about the tunnel vision and being useless on the same clip, at the bank. First of all, it is very hard to push solo dirt if you know that someone is there. You were stuck. Consider to change the plan. You are in the severe disadvantage, pushing that guy, if you have no server's stairs control. As you can be punished from the server's guy pre-firing you, an angle from the CC towards you, and a guy pre-firing from the stairs. Also, the hatch. And let's not forget about the possible Grishmoth mines, Goo mines, or now Melusi's gadget. When you run inside of the servers while the server hatch being opened and someone is on it, you should have died. Another example of correlation not meaning causation. Also, on the Cafex example, bakery and the side bakery were not checked out at all, and yet, in a 5 vs 3, you want to die just like that. A defender being around the bakery area is pretty much default if you're doing a freezer push. Also, another 5 stack. But this time the whole squad is located in blue. Or outside of the blue on the Oregon. You can't push like this. You want to push for blue 
as well as the tower stairs, on both times at the same time. The final clip that I would like to show you is a mixture of everything that I have said, throwing a 4 vs 2 lead by throwing a draw on the defender's turn of sight, even if there is 40 seconds left in a 5 stack, and nobody doing anything, and then full rush through one doorway without ADSing. Now, just a comparison between gold and the silver or bronze. This is more a tip for the lower ranks than gold. In the gold matches, there were very few. Why is he there? Deaths. In gold, people always used their second drone. No matter if they could have used it way better, they still used it. In silver or bronze, very rarely. Also, in solo queue, I have seen way more communication than in solo queue, bronze or silver. I'm not trying to make a correlation meaning causation. What I'm trying to tell you is, there's a huge possibility if you're going to use your second drone that is located in your pocket during the round, it's pretty much guaranteed that there will be less why is he there excuses for your deaths. If you don't drone, it is expected you to be surprised by a dumb position. And the final stuff, I have not watched two full rank rounds because of the audio quality, and I skipped one round because I felt like the player behind it has way more issues than all other ranked rounds I saw on the other players. Thank you for watching this video and staying with me for this long, and thanks all the patrons and YouTube members for making this video available. If you want to learn all the basics and advanced things about the siege, make sure to give me like, subscribe and click notification bell to get all notifications from my channel. Make sure to give me feedback down in the comment section below.